We have known that sooner or later, port checks must be implemented. Like we, we've we've known this like since day one. This was one of like the most obvious examples like you can pick from from 2016. But unfortunately, um, when you try to sort of really talk about this, it's sort of a difficult concept for for people to sort of get their heads around. Um, you know the amount of paperwork. That, that that that's involved, you know, the paperwork you you're looking at is like that thick, uh, and it might be just be for one load of twenty products, and then you've got to think that that one uh, pallet of those twenty products might then have to be replicated. That stack of paperwork might then have to be replicated like forty or sixty times, and you can't just copy and paste. You've got to sort of refill out every single bit. Of paperwork. And we've talked just about how much and how big that actually is. And I've, I've said before, I've, I've, I've had a friend who post um, 2020, five minutes, like five minutes to, to sort of do, to fill out one sheet. And that, that was it. It then went from five minutes to two hours for the exact same load. Like that has like material consequences on a business, and it is sometimes really difficult to sort of understand when you now got to go that that extra two hours. Well, now they've got to have someone spend what eight hours, sixteen hours, a maybe a day, maybe a week, so that you can get your products where they need to be on time. Because it it's often very not, not much spoken, but you know, as as we now sort of expect, you know, instant delivery from from things like you know Amazon Prime and and, and other things. I think we've been very much spoiled by because of of that. And even now, you see like smaller businesses complaining about the fact that people sort of expect that rapid delivery. And you know, as businesses said, well, if you want that rapid delivery, well, then you might have to pay an extra tenner on top of that if you want that that rapid delivery, uh, and to pay for that. And some people are are fine paying that; it is a convenience to to sort of do that. But it is exactly the same in a in a business world as well. They they expect, um, you know, rapid you know rapid delivery of 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 multiple things. And you, know, I've I've seen it before of, of trying to deliver websites. You might have like a, you know, well. Our development team is busy for the next uh, three months, so we can fit you in in like four months' time. Maybe, again, depending on the size and then sort of the scale of project, it might take six weeks. And it's it, it's sort of getting that understanding than those those expectations of of that there is time, there is a a, a delivery rate that that there is there. And it is now the same when you come to these logistics of all these things at the at the Dover port as well, especially because we've talked about this as well. The Dover Health Authority came out recently and said, yeah, this, this inland border facility, open door for disease. Open door. And we've talked just about how bad um, the situation you know, it really is. Remember, there is no legal requirement. If you are driving into sort of the UK and you've been said, hey, go to this inland port or this inland checking station, there's no legal obligation for you to go there. This is going to be no, um, you know, if you don't turn up like, I don't know, within so many hours of of, of it being dispatched, you, you, there isn't like a police call that will go out and say, hey, if you see this this lorry with this license plate, um, you need to pull over and, and, and like make sure that they go to this, you know, you know port or what's ex extra if they're outside, like, I don't know, the like, like the tr what they would say was the travel corridor. Um, that could sort of very well, be the case and and even then because there's no legal requirement to do it what then do you do about the smuggling opportunities because you could come in with again let's say a mixture of legal and illegal goods or just illegal goods get you know handed that piece of paper because again no checking at the bot drive off get told to go to this checking station drive i don't know somewhere else drop off your illegal goods um Drive to the checking station, get checked, get excellent, you know, you've got the okay, drive back, pick up your illegal goods, and continue on. There's just so, so much stuff of, of 
how this has been set up, which is just absolutely insane and crazy, but because there was no thought, there has been this sort of desperation, I, I think, once again, to sort of roll these initiatives out, um, not really understanding the, the need to, to sort of have this. One of the things that we are also, once again, experiencing, lack of staff. HMRC have said they need customs officials, a lot more customs officials, to be able to man these uh, ports um, and do these and carry out these checks. And not only just uh, for, for things like HMRC, but vets as well. Because <laughs> you need, some cases, if it's going to be sort of uh, animal checks, you need vets as well if you're going to sort of send the other way. So there is a big, big issue around sort of the rules of law here, the the disease potential. We'll get that to a moment, uh, and of course the 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 monetary potential. You know, why weren't we ready? I thought we should have been ready by now. I thought this was meant to be the easiest thing in the world. Well, again, once again, being proved wrong on, on the Brexiteers there again. But the disease potential is is easily the biggest one. Because how do we know that we might not end up with with swine flu? And, and I, I mentioned this on on the Labour Social. But if if swine flu ends up coming here, then what's going to be the repercussions? What's what's going what's going to happen? Well, first things first is you are going to probably see mass quarantine happen in in pretty much every single um, abattoir pig farm, etc. in the UK. They're going to have to. It's going to be like foot and mouth. Again, if you remember that, um, the different quarantine zones, you know, or you're driving through this area, we need to sort of spray down your wheels, etc. If you left your car, oh yeah, we need to sort of spray down your boots. You know, that kind of stuff all over again. And very likelihood you will see, again, mass, um, you know, burning of, of massive animal piles and carcasses of, of all those things those pictures still very 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 much um seen because that's what they, they had to do to sort of try and you know keep the disease in check um the other thing that we'll probably see um would not shock me because this was something that france tried in sort of response to uh the the mad cow uh, disease outbreak um sort of in in the uk they tried to say that there should be like a permanent 10-year quarantine on beef products coming from the UK. And if that had happened, that had, would, would have absolutely destroyed uh, the beef and the dairy industry in the UK well and truly, completely. The only reason we, we got out of that was uh, we were in the EU at the time and we were able to argue at the, at the, at the European Court that this was the case. Now, of course, if let's say that should happen in case for for, for swine, and, and France would say it, sort of say that again, uh, we would probably be able to argue our, our, our case at the at the European Court. Who knows what the potential ruling of that would be uh, this time around? Of course, um, although uh, it's it it just goes to show you like the level of, of disaster and things that could happen, especially with <coughs> pardon me, especially now with the Dover Health Authority just saying just how open a door to the disease this possibly is. And we've seen examples very recently within the past couple of years of, of these like dodgy deliveries uh, sort of arriving. And it's not just from uh, third countries. It's actually countries inside the EU as well, because everyone's everyone knows UK is an easy target. And so, of course... You are going to get dodgy actors try these things. They are going to try it. So, uh, unfortunately, I I do really worry about the fact that it could only take something like swine flu, and you could see a lot of farmers go out of business. A lot of farmers. I mean, it's not just just the the worry points. No, it's not just swine flu, uh, but also avian flu as well. Um, one of the reasons why there's such a, a a chicken or egg shortage at the moment in Russia is is not just um, the the supplies, of course, uh, you know, very much trying to sort of focus on the war effort, but because there was an avian flu outbreak and they had to sort of call hundreds of thousands of chickens, um, you know, in in Russia. So there are co huge consequences. There are huge consequences if, if something like that were to, to sort of outbreak 
here in the UK. And they could be absolutely devastating to sort of the UK farming industry. Um, and, you know, it is going to be the responsibility of whoever it is at the government at that time to sort of help clear up these things. But I will say this now, it is the current government, it is the Conservatives, it is the Brexiteers um, that have been in charge trying to sort of, you know, meant to all sort these things out. And it wouldn't shock me if Labour actually had to say, okay, well, now we've got to sort of, you know, sort Brexit out, this, this, this mess that they've left us. Um, you know, these these sort of these all these health checks that are properly uh, not implemented because probably there's a severe lack of money, severe lack of staff. You know, <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is there's probably going to be a massive rise in employment for the civil service sector in the UK. I can very, very much see that happening, honestly, in the next couple of years. Um, but that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Um, so, as always, um, let me know what you think down below, but I, I can see it very, very easily, something like swine flu, um, maybe even avian flu, maybe getting through, and that being a massive outbreak, and that causing all kinds of problems for UK farmers here. So, let me know what you think down below. Uh, please remember to click the like and the share button, and of course, down below, there's a link to the Patreon page, the one of link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can all buy me coffee. Uh, and of course, as always, thank you very much to all the people who do help and support the channel that way. And of course, we'll see you all next time.